so in this side, I've got dot one Q, so I have a VLAN ID of 200 that comes in. And then on the Q and Q side, I, uh, I'm sorry, on the Azure side where I'm doing Q and Q, I can have two different peering sessions. So let's say I've got a private peering session and a Microsoft peering session, which is uh, essentially their uh, public services. So say on the private side, I'm gonna use VLAN 200. And on the Microsoft peering side, I'm gonna use VLAN 300. You know what, let's just make this VLAN uh, 2000 to prove the point here, and we'll call this one 3000. So in this case, what will happen is that there's, a, there's a Q and Q, an outer tag. Let's put an outer tag here. And there's an inner tag here. And there are basically, there are two VLANs on the inner tag, in this case, 200 and 300. So that'd be two different pairing sessions coming in. And then uh, again, it's scenario two, just in reverse, where I'm gonna take this outer tag, which let's call it VLAN 75, Frame's gonna hit. I'm gonna strip VLAN 75 on the outer tag, look at the inner tag and see what the inner tag is. In this case, if the inner tag is 200, I'm gonna map that inner tag to VLAN 2000. If it's 300, I'm gonna map that inner tag to VLAN 3000. On my router over here, there's two different pairing sessions and then two different sub interfaces, right? So I could have, you know, gig one, uh, dot 2000 and I can have gig one dot 3000 and that's why I'm traversing and bringing gig three with sub interfaces all the way through to map so I've got a single express route connection with multiple peering sessions over it. that's one of the reasons uh, Azure uses QQ that's how they're able to accomplish it the fourth scenario is Q and Q to Q and Q Basically, Q and Q to Q and Q is a tunnel all the way through. You can almost think of it like an like an access port uh, for for the ECX switch because the ECX switch it doesn't really have to look at anything. It's just going to look at the Q, the Q and Q tags or, or look at the outer tag and not really have to manipulate or do anything with the inner tag because I've got the outer tag that I need to map on both sides of the equation. All right, so there are the four scenarios. There are the, the kind of VLAN mappings. I've, I've got a, a, a good document, a good visual. I'll, I'll post out here and, uh, as well, and then you can see how it, how it flows. But, but, but this is how the ECX switch is going to uh, manipulate frames as it traverses from the A side to the Z side, and vice versa. All right, so the fifth scenario is network edge. Network edge is going to use a VNI construct, a VX, a VX LAN network identifier. So when you spin up a, a network edge device here, each interface that gets spun up is going to have its own unique uh, VNI. So let's just call it 7410, 7411, and 7412. And these will map to, you know, gig 3, gig 4, and gig 5. It's going to work exactly the same. The big difference is instead of remapping or mapping a VNI or VLAN to VLAN, it's just going to map VNI to VLAN. So uh, if I go back to this scenario, so VLAN 382, I'm going to map VNI 7410, which is attached to gig 3. That will get mapped up here to VLAN 382. And as it traverses the switch, same thing is happening, right? I'm going to map 7410 to VLAN 382. And that's the way that works. So again, all the same scenarios apply on the Z side. Apply... For scenario five on the network edge side, I'm just not going to enumerate each one of them, but, but that's the way it works. So you really have to have a good understanding of what's going to flow from A to Z and how it's going to manipulate the VLANs in each one of these scenarios. Because it, it, it does get important, especially on network edge for bring your own connections. You know, if they're, if they're Q and Q connections and you have to understand S tags and C tags or VLAN IDs if you're using dot one Q instead of Q and Q. So you really have to understand nothing is going to happen from a layer three peering and higher level protocol support if you don't have the layer three, or I'm sorry, if you don't have the layer two constructs in place to make that happen. So all this VLAN manipulation, everything that's going to happen, the VNI to VLAN or VLAN to VLAN manipulation is going to happen right here in the middle of the switch. You've got to understand how that works so you can, you know, troubleshoot or understand what needs to be instantiated on both sides of the equation to build the underlay.